piece. So I've made 12 playlists, one for each of the zodiac signs in Western astrology to meditate on each as we pass through the seasons. The playlists are mostly between six to eight hours long, and I've built them so that you can listen either in order for a curated journey through the themes and contradictions of each sign or on shuffle for another kind of magical experience. Each zodiac playlist is filled with artists who are born under the appropriate sun sign, which has been a super fun part of the project. Of course, I find it important to remind us all that we are, obviously, all complex human beings who in various ways embody all 12 signs. I think the zodiac can only be deeply understood as a whole, and that is why I've created this project to help folks learn about it in a fun way. For me, the driving force in choosing songs for these playlists was not the birthdays of the artists, but rather the core spirit, messages, vibes, and imagery of the songs in relation to the signs of the zodiac. In this way, I've done my best to honor the complexity of both the artists and the symbols. You can access all 12 playlists here. I'm now also almost done creating these accompanying videos for each one. You can check out the Capricorn video here and stay tuned for Pisces, the final installment next month. The full videos and write-ups are available to patrons and shorter forms are going out on social media. Thank you as always to my patrons for sustaining the work that I do both with my band, Adam Gottlieb and One Love, as well as fun stuff like this. And if you are not yet a patron and you feel inspired to support my work of producing content that integrates music, poetry, spirituality, and revolutionary vision, I hope you will consider becoming a patron at least as long as we still live under capitalism. Then after that, I assume it won't be such a big deal. You'll gain access to loads of music, poetry, and other content that I've been creating over the last several years and I'm constantly producing. In any case, I hope both these playlists and videos help you appreciate the richness of the Zodiac in ways that serve your personal evolution and spiritual growth. It's been a profound project for me, and I'd love to hear your reactions, ideas, suggestions, etc. So please leave a comment with any thoughts or feedback you may have. And thank you as always for watching, following, and supporting. Now let's zoom out into the realm of Aquarius. To approach Aquarius season, let's start with the movie Groundhog Day. Actually, let's come back to that in a sec. Let's talk about the weather. I'm from Chicago, where the climate makes February f brutal to get through. By February, it's just been a really, really long haul to get through the coldest part of the winter, which starts to feel like it might last forever. That feeling generally starts around late January, corresponding to the zodiac month of Aquarius. By the end of this period, though, you can usually detect some of the earliest signs of spring, which is what the ancient pagan festivals that eventually became Groundhog Day are all about. And that brings us back to the 1993 film Groundhog Day. What makes that silly movie so compelling is the way we can relate to Bill Murray's character, Phil, as he goes through an existentially horrifying experience of being trapped in a cycle of seemingly meaningless versions of the same endless day. An eternal prison all of his own in which he is at once free and absolutely bounded, forever in a kind of exile from people, and yet, as a result, finally able to relate to others as his authentic self. The ancient and universal feeling of will this winter ever end is transformed through the full force of the story's metaphorical power into an allegory for life's limit situations that all of us can relate to. We are all, in a sense, trapped in our own limited experience of humanity, bound by our time and place in history, though we can sense with our imaginations the potential for something much greater. In the end, our hero must find channels for authentic self-expression that also celebrate and create space for the other. We must all learn how to connect, nourish, and touch other selves in order to unite our individual soul with the ocean of other souls. This opens the gates for our passage to another stage of existence where our full individual and collective potential can flourish on the other side 
awaits a whole new age. The water that Aquarius bears can symbolize many things, the true self, the essence of life, the world to come. And Aquarius must bear it all the way to the ocean, Pisces, which is not an easy journey. The only way through is to transcend the personal sense of struggle by focusing on a larger vision that keeps the soul going. That is one way of understanding why the water bearer is actually an air sign. It holds tight to the vision, ideal, of the abundance and nourishment of the world to come. Seeing ahead of its time is a typical struggle for the Aquarian soul. Part of the paradox of this condition is that, as Aeolian Hart writes, Aquarius has the unique ability to be alone while remaining deeply in love with humanity as a whole. For Aquarius, the world to come is not an abstract idea, but an intensely personal desire, thirst, and drive. Aquarius is first of all an individual seeking personal freedom, yet it is precisely through this struggle to achieve freedom for themselves that they must become a servant to their higher purpose, and ultimately a servant to all, even unto death. As a result of this single-minded pursuit of freedom, Aquarius can embody both the greatest humility and the greatest arrogance, depending on dignity. Aquarius is often associated with the quality of genius, the ability to think beyond the common ways that we have been trained to. This theory certainly seems well evidenced by the quality and quantity of brilliant artists and creatives who have been born under this sign. As part of my research for this project, I've been referencing databases of musicians organized by SunSign on thefamouspeople.com. Aquarius Singers yields results of over 300 names that I couldn't stop scrolling through. I finally found Regina Spector at 106, Quest Love at 120, Lead Belly at 155, Anderson Pack at 166, Lucinda Williams at 173, Antonio Carlos Chobem at 232, Dennis Brown at 303, and the folklorist Alan Lomax at 308. It is both funny and fitting to me to see how these great artists have been somehow ranked so low on this list by the site's algorithms. But such is the fate of misunderstood Aquarius. Aquarius has the power to live in truth, integrity, and authenticity, rooted in a vision of wholeness through the long, slow process of history's unfolding. Because of its visionary, humanist, and idealistic qualities, Aquarius is probably the sign most often associated with revolution, social transformation, and the longing for a utopian or messianic age. It is difficult to separate this aspect of the symbolism from the idea of the Age of Aquarius though there is very little consensus among astrologers about the finer points of this fuzzy concept of astrological ages. There is some agreement on a few basics, dating back to antiquity. Astrological ages, corresponding to the 12 signs of the zodiac, based on the Earth's axial precession, are about 2,000 years long, and precess in the opposite direction of the planets. The age of Pisces is generally attributed to the time period of Jesus and the rise of Christianity, and the age of Aquarius to our modern, current, and near future times. Now, in full transparency, as much as I recognize how easy it is to make fun of astrology for all of its vagueness and ambiguities, I also have to admit that, obviously, I'm into it, and that I personally hold this idea of the age of Aquarius as quite sacred. I am a believer, and I can't even front about it, so I won't bother trying to play it off like I'm too cool for it. It is one of the ideas that seems to describe the emerging reality of the revolutionary times we are living through, and it is part of what has kept me coming back to astrology all these years. As some of you know, I do something every year to try to honor Bob Marley Day, February 6th, kicking off the first week of Black History Month in the U.S., my practice brought me into co-organizing an annual concert that I have the great privilege and pleasure of putting on with other Marleyhead friends and community in Chicago. To me, Marley is the epitome of an Aquarian artist, 
and he literally shaped an entire cultural movement that continues to give musical expression to a revolutionary vision and a transcendent way of living that guides millions of listeners toward the world to come like a star. Inspired by Marley, the opening song on my band's first album is called Integrity. It begins with a paraphrase of this opening line from Marley's classic anthem, Exodus. Men and people will fight you down when you see Ja Light. Let me tell you, if you're not wrong, everything is all right. <laughs> may this music help you to hold close to the light within yourself and trust wherever it may take you on your way to the world of freedom, justice, peace, and abundance that we know is possible and in sight. Let the sun shine. Let the sun shine in. The sun shine in. One love.